it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. I'm all excited to be with you. I've got another great episode for you. I'm sitting here in the Furman Garner Performance Studio at KUAF. You guys know that we partnered up with them a while back and we've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of work here at this radio studio. And it's always just cool when people are coming on the podcast and I get to invite them. And I say, yeah, meet me at KUAF. And you know, sometimes they think, oh, am I going to be live on the air? And I'm like, no, no, don't worry about that. I got you covered. We're just going to record it and it will be it will be aired at a later date on the podcast. And so these guests that I have today, these two wonderful individuals that are not only guests on the podcast, but also personal friends of mine now, because we have become acquainted over the past few years, I'm excited to share their story and what they're doing. And actually, one of these guests has no has been on the podcast before, and that's Lindsay Leverett Higgins, who is the president of the Northwest Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Council. Uh, they put on a fabulous program earlier this year, and we covered it. Uh, on the podcast, and we talked about what they were going to do. They brought Dr. Cornell West in and had so many wonderful people that met at the uh, the Performance Center at the Fayetteville Public Library. And it's just, they're doing some amazing work. And so Lindsay, along with one of her partners in crime, Chris Seawood, who is the treasurer of uh, the Northwest Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Council, have decided to join me today. And and we're actually talking about a an important conversation, an important topic that is actually near and dear to my heart. As an African-American, one of the things I'm always saying, and you guys all hear me talk about this, is that when I moved here to Northwest Arkansas, I didn't know what to expect as an African-American. Now, fast forward eight years, things have changed. I know a lot more about this area than I did when I first got here in 2014, but it doesn't mean that there isn't room for improvement. It doesn't mean that there isn't an opportunity for us to kind of work on continuing to get things right. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to placemaking and what we want Northwest Arkansas to be. And so Lindsay and Chris and the rest of the team at the Northwest Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Council created a census and it's called the State of Black Northwest Arkansas Census. And that's essentially to for them to be able to determine exactly you know, what is the state, the current state of affairs here in Northwest Arkansas? How many African-Americans do we actually have here? How many people of color, when we're, we're thinking of, of black and brown people here in Northwest Arkansas, we want to get an intake on exactly who's here, you know, maybe a little bit about why they're here and just to understand what they need in order to have a successful outcome when it comes to calling a place home. Is that fair? That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it in a nutshell. So, yes, all right. So without further ado, I want to welcome Lindsay Leverett Higgins and Chris Seawood to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I hope you guys like that long, that long prelude. So we love it. We love it. Thank you for having us today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good to be here, brother. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, just give us a quick, for those that didn't listen to episode 202 of the podcast, which I encourage you to go back and listen to, and we will link to it in the show notes. For those that don't know about the Northwest Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Council, Lindsay, why don't you give us a quick cliff note version of of the organization, and then we'll get into the census that you guys are are undertaking now. Absolutely. So the NWA MLK Council was really established as an opportunity for an organization to live out the life and legacy and dream of Dr. King. During the time that the council was established, the late Reverend J. Aaron Hawkins recognized that in Northwest Arkansas, that we had a gap in celebrating the life and the legacy of Dr. King. Pastor Hawkins was from the Fort Smith area. And in Fort Smith, every year they put on a big celebration for Dr. King during the MLK holiday weekend. And so he thought that we needed to do something similar in Northwest Arkansas. And thus he worked very hard with other members of the Northwest Arkansas community to establish what originally was the MLK Planning Commission and then has now known as the MLK Council. And so as a result of Pastor Hawkins' work, the council was established and we have continued year after year to celebrate 
and advance the dream and life and legacy of Dr. King through our giving in Northwest Arkansas. We do a phenomenal job with giving scholarships for high school and college students. And every year we have been able to increase the giving and the number of scholarships that we are able to give to students in our area. And then in addition to that, the council has become very active and has taken a very active voice in social justice issues that impact our community here locally and greater. And so really just thankful that we have an opportunity to continue Dr. King's legacy and to continue to be the torchbearer of Dr. King's dream. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, you guys did such a phenomenal job with the program. As we're recording this in July of 2023, yet the program was held back in January of 2023. You had Dr. Cornell West here. It was just a phenomenal program. We actually got to see all of the young people that were receiving scholarships. So you've kind of put your money where your mouth is when, when it comes <laughs> to that. And, and just again, I got to see Dr. Cornell West in several iterations of him, both up close and personal, backstage and everything. And it was, it was a treat. Hmm. And I honestly, if you had said to me, hey, you're going to get to meet Dr. Cornell West, but it's not going to be in Manhattan. It's not going to be in Boston downtown. It's going to be at the Fayetteville Public Library. And then again, at the University of Arkansas, yeah. I'd have been like, give me a break. But, <laughs> but that that was the case. And so yeah. I, I applaud you guys for pulling that together. And I can only imagine how, I don't know how you guys are going to outdo yourself in 2024. Oh, no pressure. get ready. No get pressure. ready. I know, I know, I know. So, Stay so, tuned. Yes. Yeah, so, so I think, and again, I want to I preface this by saying I always give our audience a reason why they should be listening to this podcast. Mm -hmm. Why is it important in the first place, right? And I did, I've Sometimes I've said it tongue in cheek that, oh, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to get into when I relocated to Northwest Arkansas. I really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And as an African-American, I had, a, you know, I had all of these ideas in my head about what it was going to be like moving to North, moving to Arkansas, period. But then specifically to Northwest Arkansas. And I think it's important for us to recognize that everybody coming from from any walk of life, any minority upbringing or anything like that has their own set of ideas about what life's going to be like in a place yes. before they actually move there. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I mean, it's not, this is not unfamiliar for anybody. So for, for my, for my Latinx brothers and sisters, for my Asian brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. it's just, that's just kind of the way that it is. Yeah. And so I think it's important for us to understand what life is going to be like, you know, even for the folks in the LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus community, mm -hmm. what is life going to be like here in Northwest Arkansas? Mm -hmm. What can I expect? Of course, my mind was racing as a, as a black man. What, what am I going to, what am I going to experience here? I was pleasantly surprised. And I will tell anyone that will listen that looks like me or otherwise that, Hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. Mm -hmm. But with that said, I think it's important for us to be intentional about how we develop a place where we live and, and what we ultimately want to see here. And I know that you guys were with this census that you put together. There were some other programs that came about before this that served as inspiration for you. Would, would you would e mm -hmm. either of you want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. So the impetus for us doing the state of black and WA census really came about as a result of the work of the NWA Council, who I'm sure you're very familiar with. Absolutely. And one of their part partner organizations, Engage in WA, who conducts their own diversity report, I think annually, I may be mistaken, but I their particular report came out, I believe, in 2022. And it just was a very good report and how it laid out the state of the minority community in Northwest Arkansas as related to schools, et cetera, growth, projected growth. But it was really in that projected growth area for the African-American community that it really just stood out for us. Number one is that the projected growth for our community was just really almost negligible in yeah. terms of a percentage standpoint. The growth, obviously, we've seen growth over the last decade, couple of decades in Northwest Arkansas. You, like me and Lindsay, we both I have moved here. I came here. I'm almost a 30 year person now. I'm, I probably could be called a local now but <laughs> yeah. since 1994. I came here for college and got married and raised a family. And I, I was the same way. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I kind of gotten word because my sister attended the U of A here and she decided to stay here and raised a family as well. So 
I understand how the area can get its hooks in you, but still, you can still come up wanting from a minority standpoint, community standpoint. But so the impetus for us was really to kind of take a deeper dive from the Engage in WA report and say, hey, with all the growth that's happening in Northwest Arkansas, tremendous growth, NWA Council is doing a tremendous job. It had been doing a tremendous job at recruiting, wanting to bring talent into the area. We're seeing all this robust infrastructure happening around the area. We've got all these beautiful trails, museums, theaters, et cetera. We just thought it would be really, really incumbent upon us as a council to take a step back and say, hey, what about the African-American community and what are the state of affairs for our community today? But not only today, where can we be in the next five years, 10 years, 20 yeah. years from now? And how what do those alignments look like strategically so that the stakeholders know that, hey, the African-American community is here, has always been a vital part of the community, continue to be. And these are the potential investments, et cetera, that are needed to continue to ensure that our community thrives along with the rest of the population. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to you talk about it, you know, you think about the place that you want to have. And, and this conversation is important on a number of levels, mm -hmm. the least of which is there's 36 new people a day moving mm -hmm. to Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. You only get what you inspect That's in right. life. Absolutely. That's right. 100 percent. So yeah. I believe that if you inspect, you know, where the shortcomings are or where are the areas of improvement, it's the only way that you're going to ever see the change that you see. Yeah. Obviously, Dr. King <laughs> talked about that ad nauseum. I mean, he just, mm -hmm. that's all he ever talked mm -hmm. about. I actually watched Selma again for like the 18th time <laughs> and just, you know, I just get inspired by it. I mean, yes, I understand and recognize the travails and challenges. And, you know, for sometimes I have to watch some of those movies just so that I'm not complaining as much as, mm -hmm. as the way things were. But, but as far as we've come, we still have a long way to yeah. go. Yeah. And that's kind of the reality for it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we're not in a fully colorblind society. Yes, you know, when an African-American moves to a new place, one of the first things that he or she does is find a good salon, mm -hmm. find a good barber. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just little things like that. Yeah. I remember that was the first thing I was yeah. looking for. I had to ask my best, who, my, one of my best friends who lives here, who's a white guy. I was like, Mark, do you know a black barber? Right. You know, yeah, when I yeah. moved here, I had to find one. And, yeah. and, you know, it was, you know, those are a couple of the simple questions that I had. And it took my wife a while mm -hmm. to find somebody that could braid her hair and, mm -hmm. and, you know, just do some things that she just needed done. And so I think it's important for us to do that. And, you know, I was really encouraged by some of the results from the Engage NWA that showed how, like, for instance, how our Latino and Latina brothers and sisters, how that community is growing. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we are seeing specifically some new things happen from a placemaking perspective. We now have the first multilingual bank mm -hmm. in all of Arkansas. Yes. That's right. That's Shout right. out to Banco C yeah. and Francisco Herrero and yeah. Karina, Karina and the rest of the yeah. team that are yeah. over there. They're very dear friends of mine. They're doing an amazing job. And now they're opening up another location in Springdale mm -hmm. because there is a need. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of what we're saying here is that even though we're, it's important for us to take stock of what we have as mm -hmm. African-Americans here in Northwest Arkansas mm -hmm. and then to say, OK, now that we know what we have, that's the whole purpose of doing a census. What do we need? Mm -hmm. What's important? It's not so much that we need it to the exclusion of everybody else. It's like, no, these are just some things that we need right. that as a community, I think are really important. I think a lot of people forget, and I don't, I don't want to get on my historical soapbox, but you know, you know, every community for whatever reason is important to the group that makes up that community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, in during the times of the Jim Crow South and, and other places in the North even, you know, there were black communities mm -hmm. that were self-sufficient. I mean, mm -hmm. we know the history of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. We know the history of the Greenwood District. Mm -hmm. We know we know the ultimate results of that. And mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily talking about that, but I'm just talking about understanding why a community like that is important mm -hmm. to a group of folks. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you're doing with the census will also should also help to serve the purpose in not only encouraging and informing but also creating a framework or a blueprint for what could be done 
in the future here in Northwest Arkansas, mm-hmm. as this area continues to grow, mm-hmm. as we go towards that mark of a million people, we're now at the 100th fastest growing mm-hmm. MSA in the country. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So people are coming here left and right yeah. that look like you and I and yeah. you and, and others. And, and we're just going to get a whole bunch of folks, but we need to be very deliberate about how we place make for the future. Yes. And like you said, the council is doing a great job of working on that. Engage NWA. There are a lot of other organizations. But in order for the University of Arkansas to have success recruiting diverse talent to come and teach here and stay here, Mm -hmm. in order for Walmart, in order for J.B. Hunt, Tyson, you fill in the blank Fortune 1 or Fortune 500 company that has a foundation here or has an office here because Mm -hmm. of all the CPG representation Mm -hmm. that's here. If you want to bring on that type of talent to come here, that type of diverse talent, you need to be part of this solution of encouraging participation in the census and also asking how can we be a part of this to make sure that we are seeing the best and the brightest from all walks of life, Mm -hmm. from every hue imaginable. And Randy, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that we're growing and we're doing a great job of bringing people here. But where the real critical control point, if you will, is, is not so much in the recruitment, it's in the retention. Mm -hmm. And as you Mm -hmm. think about Blacks and African Americans in Northwest Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas aesthetically is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But when we think about from a cultural standpoint, from an economic standpoint, we recognize that there are gaps and disparities that exist amongst our community. And so while we are doing a good job on recruiting talent and bringing Black and African-American talent to Northwest Arkansas, where we really struggle is in the retention of those individuals because we don't have the cultural aesthetics that people need when they come here from major cities. If you want to go to a popular hip hop or R&B concert, the likelihood that it's coming to Northwest Arkansas is slim to none. And while we're strategically positioned to be relatively close to Dallas or to Kansas City or to Tulsa so that you can drive to go and do those cultural things. Mm What is it that prevents us from having those opportunities in our back door? And so if we're really serious about making Northwest Arkansas a place that is inclusive for everyone and a place that feels like home for Blacks and African Americans here, we really have to be tapped in and engaged to thinking about closing the gaps and filling the disparities that our community calls out. And so that is really the crux, if you will, of what we want to do with this census project is to look at six different big buckets and say, as it relates to the Black community in Northwest Arkansas, this is how we feel about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we want to use the data to inform the key stakeholders that really have the corporate muscle, if you will, to help bring about some of the changes, to help close some of the gaps and to remediate some of the disparities that we know that exist. But we have to lend our voice to the project so that we have the data to really be able to tell that black story of Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also eliminating some of the unintentional, I would call naivete that exists in Northwest Arkansas because we have this bubble of beauty, like you will, and we have all of these amenities that sometimes we take for granted that, okay, there can be a lack of things that are still needed, particularly when it comes to minority communities. So I think, again, the census also speaks to that, that it's okay. We're highlighting, like Lindsay said, from a categorical perspective, we want people to understand this is the state of Black NWA from a healthcare perspective, from an education perspective, so that people know, yes, it's applaudable. It's it's great that now we have a new medical school coming in here, but we also want you to see the data that says, okay, this is how well or how not well the African-American community is doing as it relates to their health care sure. so that the new medical school can say, well, this is concerning. So maybe a step is we need to place a greater emphasis on ensuring that more black doctors are matriculating through or or medical professionals of color are matriculating through the medical school and placed in Northwest Arkansas to address those needs. Same way with 
businesses, et cetera. You're a businessman yourself. You're an entrepreneur. How much more greater would it be if we could highlight via the census the opportunities that exist for black entrepreneurs? And I know they're go- out there galore for our banking partners and stakeholders to know that, hey, black entrepreneurs are here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, here are some connectors that we've just cre- created. You've been looking for people to give business loans to. Here they are. So it's just opportunities like that that we we believe can come out of this census. Again, and the the idea is not at all separation. If anything, it is more integration, but it is helping to build a greater sense of community for our community specifically, but everybody gets to benefit from it. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think it's important and it bears repeating that you know, a lot of times when we get into hyper focusing on our own, we're all mm. focused on mm-hmm. our own stuff. Chris, you you got your own stuff that you're focused yeah, on. Yeah. Lindsay, you got your stuff that you're focused yeah. on. We all got kids and there's stuff that's like right in front of us. That's like, those are the things that we're focused on. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we can't see anything else that's going on around mm-hmm. us. And I get that. I think it's a lot of it is what you're saying is, is about just creating awareness mm-hmm. yes. and then taking that and creating a dialogue around that yeah. awareness so yes. people can understand that. I think that's important. And, and, you know, just for those that are listening, I took the census. I did it. It takes about seven or eight minutes to do. I thought the questions were very thoughtful. I thought that I think Rubik's that, that put it together for you. Mm-hmm. Shout out to those guys and Emma and, and the rest <laughs> of her team. But I thought they did a phenomenal job with the questions. I'm anxious to see what the results are. And and you're absolutely right. It's funny. At at the day that we're recording this, I just had a conversation with the folks from the Alice Walton School of Medicine Mm -hmm. and the whole health institute and what they're about to do. And you're absolutely right. That is one of their mandates Mm -hmm. and missions Mm -hmm. is to bring in a diverse group of practitioners that they can then train and keep here Mm -hmm. locally. Mm Because you're absolutely right. I don't know. I know there are a couple. I mean, there are black doctors Mm -hmm. here in Northwest Mm -hmm. Arkansas. I don't know who they are. I mean, I've actually actually I take that back. I've met a few, but one. (laughs) Yeah. But but they're not my doctors, you know, so but I think it's important to understand that that exists. But like I just recently one of the first female chiropractors and the youngest one is right here in Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's just kind of creating awareness around that to know that, hey, some of these folks are here. And this is what they're doing. And that's why, you know, participating in this census is so important, whether you're an ally trying to encourage your friends that are black and brown to participate in this, mm-hmm. or you happen to be black and brown and you're just like, oh, well, that's just one more survey. It's not going to make a big difference. It will make a big it difference. Absolutely will. It will. Yeah. I mean, and I think, Lindsay, you said before we started recording, you were like, well, we have about 15 or 16,000 African Americans here in Northwest Arkansas. I think it's important if we can get as many as possible to Mm -hmm. participate in this, it will create invaluable information that we can then act upon. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say something. Oh, well, you know, there's a lot of us here. You know, we're struggling because we don't, you know, we're not, you know, our needs aren't being met. It's a whole nother thing to put the data out there. Yeah. And And say, here you go. We need the data to inform the stakeholders. The data is going to be the substantial thing that will really help us to tell the story of being black in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think that data, you know, it's the stakeholders. When I think of all the different stakeholders uh, and, and I know a lot of them and, and, and there's still more that I don't know. I think anyone here in Northwest Arkansas that sees the writing on the wall and what this area represents wants to play a part yeah. in creating as welcoming of an environment and as safe of a space as we can yes. for everybody. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that keeps me coming back for more about Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. That's why I've doubled down to do this podcast on a regular basis. That's why I don't, you know, I try to bring everybody on to tell their stories. Of course, everybody knows I don't do two things. I don't talk about politics and I don't talk about religion because <laughs> there's enough out there for that. Right. But I'm, I'm trying to bring some good news. I'm trying to encourage people to do the right thing where and when possible and to recognize that the change that we seek is right in front of us when yeah, we look in the absolutely. mirror. Absolutely. Yeah. It and, starts with us. Yeah. And and again, and I think for us, the seriousness of this census for us is just the collection of the data, absolutely, but it is also the driving of the outcomes. Because you mentioned earlier, 
like a signature bank again for the for an example, they saw the, the need for the creation of a Latinx bank. That's why you see the creation of a of a Banco C. So the outcomes are vitally important for us. And we just we really, really believe that this census and the data that's collected out of this census is going to drive outcomes. We don't want this just to be a road or a bridge to nowhere. Right. I mean, so many times we've seen whomever, you know, just various reports that are reported out and it just kind of ends there. We don't want to do that, nor do we want to be one of those organizations that screams at the darkness. It's it's <laughs> it's lighting a candle. It's like, yes, right. we're highlighting the issues and the opportunities that exist. But here are also the strategic outcomes that we, we can present as well. Here are solutions. That's um, important, though, too, because yes, I want yes. people to hear that very much is that none of this was born out of a. We've got to make a stand. And if we don't make a stand now, this is never going to happen. It's like, no, we're, we're just trying to create some awareness around this issue. We're trying to put it out there because we recognize that this is the kind of place where when you create awareness around a topic or you share data that's real data, people tend to act on that. Mm -hmm. Right. And we saw that. We saw that when the Engage NWA report came out. Mm -hmm. And they're still acting on that information. Mm -hmm. There's so much data that's there. There's so much information that's there. It's like, okay, how are we going to address this? How are we going to address that? And so I think that in doing this census, it's going to make a difference in in the African-American community here. And it will be one additional feather that we have in our cap when it comes time to trying to attract more people, more black and brown people to come to Northwest Arkansas it, yes. and mm -hmm. call this home. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. Because there's a lot of us around the country. I mean, but it's just, you know, we talk about it and, I, and, I, and I've talked about it a lot. I mean, there was a huge African-American population in Arkansas back in the day, mm -hmm. back in the day, day, way back. <laughs> but, you know, if you read the book like The Warmth of Other Sons and other books that talk about the Great Migrations, great migration. yes. I mean, these those had an unfortunate impact of taking all of that talent, all of those individuals and putting them someplace else. Yeah. And all we're saying is as we start to welcome some of that talent back to Northwest Arkansas, yes. we want to make sure that we create a welcoming environment for them and a place where we can address the needs that they have. And it's interesting you bring that up because I was reading a report the other day. I can't remember when it was, but there's also now a migration of African-Americans back to the South from the North now. Yeah. So why not again prepare for that migration? of our population back to the South. Yeah. I mean, some people would argue kind of where we sit in Northwest Arkansas, but Arkansas is in the South. Yeah. But again, Lindsay kind of mentioned, we sit in a great place. So, so why not be that place so we don't have to go to Dallas or Tulsa or Oklahoma city and we can take full advantage of, you know, this great place that is the Ozark mountain. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing too is, and as I tell people, you know, and I remind all my friends, I mean, as, as a Howard man, I have friends all over the world, but all my friends that are on the coast and they're like, man, what are you doing in, in Northwest Arkansas? I'm like, man, you don't, you don't understand. It's the heartland. And I didn't understand it either until I got here. And so anybody that's listening to this that looks like Lindsay or Chris or myself, you need to really take, don't judge a book by its cover, open it up and start reading it. Mm. And that's something that I think is happening here in Northwest Arkansas. And it's one of the reasons why I've doubled down in this area and I will continue to do so. And I, if, if I have to make my voice as loud as I can to get people to take notice, then that's what I'll do. I've got a big mouth. So I will, <laughs> I will, I will figure it out and we'll make it work. Right. So, but then no, I mean, that's, that's the reason why I press record as much as I do, because yeah. I want to be able to continue to tell this story until I'm silenced. And I don't mean by somebody silencing me. I mean by like, I'm dead. <laughs> so yeah. graves are dead. So <laughs> until I'm there, I'm going to continue to talk about these things and continue to tell these stories because they do matter. So for people that are listening to this that are like, okay, I'm convinced I need to take this census. How do they do that? Everything is powered through our website. So okay. www.nwamlk.org. Okay. You can visit our website and there's a banner at the top of the website for the State of Black NWA Census Project. Click the banner and it will take you right to the Census Project. 
Well, and I will, because I know I shared it out on LinkedIn. I think I shared it out on Facebook. I've shared it with the I Am Northwest Arkansas community. We've got several thousand people that follow us on several of the platforms. So I'm going to make sure that we share it out again and make sure that people have direct access to that census so they can take it again. It doesn't take long. I mean, seven, eight, nine. I mean, if you read slow, maybe 10 minutes 10 at the minutes, most, yeah. but you'll, you'll be in and out. It's a very well done census. And I think it will be hugely valuable. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm actually reaching out to my barber and I'm going to encourage him. I'm going to bring him a little sheet and ask him if he would just encourage everybody that he knows that comes and gets a cut by him to please share this and get some involvement, you know? All right. And are you encouraging students at the U of A to participate in this as well? Yes, I mean, we right? are. So, yes. so just because they don't, they're not from here or they don't technically live here, even though they do. When you're here, you're here. Yes. When you're here, you're here. And when our students are in Northwest Arkansas, we hope that we're creating such a welcoming and warm environment that upon graduation, that they decide that this is the place that they want to call exactly. home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It takes mm-hmm. it back to that conversation we had earlier about not just recruitment, but about retention. Mm-hmm. And so like Chris said, Chris came here for school and he stayed. I came here for graduate school and I stayed. And so we see the beauty and the value in the opinions of our students. And we hope that in doing this exercise, that we're creating an environment that causes them to want to call Northwest Arkansas their home. Yeah, yeah. no, that's. That's well put. I, I certainly would encourage everybody that's listening to this to take part in it. And again, if you are not the demographic that needs to be taking this, but you know that demographic, share this with them. Please share. Sharing is caring. So I want to encourage <laughs> you to do that as yeah. well. So and that that's for all of my friends out there that know people and and especially pass the word around. If you're a hiring manager here in Northwest Arkansas and you're constantly complaining about we just need more diversity. We're, I need a, I need more candidates to consider. Mm-hmm. You need to be thinking about the impact that a census like this can have mm-hmm. as we continue to attract more and more talent to come mm-hmm. here. I, I'll, I'm going to say this last story and then we'll close out. But a couple of months ago, Sam's Club asked me to come up and participate in an HBCU event that they did up at their headquarters. By the way, shout out to Sam's Club headquarters. That headquarters <laughs> is dope. You know, they've got the fountain soda. They've got the fountain drink. They got a little bit of everything. So I walked in there. I was like, I called one of my buddies that works at Sam's. I was like, man, if I had known this, I would have gotten a job at Sam's. This, this, like, this is like, you're like a kid in a candy store up there. So, but no, shout out to Sam's Club. And and as much grief as I, I like to give them, because I was always a Costco person before I moved here. Oh, don't say and, that. Really. I know, I know, I know. And I like, I like razzing certain people about that, but but no, no, I, I appreciate Sam's Club and, and I love I love what they represent in terms of offering, you know, really great opportunities. And I've heard so many good stories about how Sam's Club came about in the first place when when Sam Walton would go out and check out the Price Club place out in the, on the West Coast. There was mm-hmm. a there was a precursor to all of these big box retailers. And Sam Walton went and investigated one of them. And he was in there one day taking notes with a recorder and everything. I can only see this in my head. He's got a suit on. He's walking around this big box retailer taking notes. And some of the workers confiscated his recorder and everything. <laughs> and so he reached back out to them and said, hey, I, you know, you can keep the tape. I just want to get my my recorder back. And they <laughs> sent everything back to him. But that that was actually his inspiration for how he developed Sam's Club because mm-hmm. he wanted to create that type of club. So shout out to that. And, and no, I, I, I really enjoyed seeing how specifically Walmart and Sam's Club are getting along with the times and, and just the simple fact that they would make time to reach out to all these HBCUs, invite these young people mm-hmm. to come and spend some time there and learn about the opportunities that exist both at an internship level as well as as, as entry level employment. I think it's it's huge. And so as any company that's in Northwest Arkansas are making those efforts to attract a diverse talent pool, yeah. you want to make sure that that diverse talent pool knows what's happening in this area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's happening in this area is are tremendous opportunities like the state of black NWA census that's taking place right now through the Northwest Arkansas MLK Junior Council, among so many other things. Mm. But I don't want that to be missed by anyone that we're here trying to make this the best place that we possibly can. And it's going to take a village. And us three, we're part of that village. And there's so many others that, you know, we can't, we don't have time to name, but we certainly will appreciate you sharing out the information about this census 
And if you are part of this census, please be a part of it. They fill it out and uh, your information matters. Yes. So, you know, don't, yeah, just that's all I have to share. So any last words that you guys would like to leave our audience with? I would just encourage anyone that's listening to lend your voice to the census project. You have no idea how much of a difference that it makes taking seven, eight, nine, ten 10 minutes to lend your voice to the project. Northwest Arkansas is growing and changing every day. And we want to ensure that this is a place that is inclusive. And this is a place that is welcoming and and feels like home for all of us. Mm-hmm. And so we're just kind of a, a small part of that. But the NWA MLK Council is definitely doing the grassroots work on the ground to ensure that our voice is heard and that these strategic stakeholders understand what needs to happen to continue to grow Northwest Arkansas and to make this our Northwest Arkansas. There you go. Anything else you want to add to that, Chris? Or? No, well said. So it is well said. <laughs> now, if there's a stakeholder listening to this that's like, hey, we want to be a part of this or we want to get this data, how do they get in touch with you guys about that? So we have contact information on our website mm-hmm. and they can reach out to myself, to Tanya Cook, who is our newly incoming vice president for the council, sure. or to Christy Wood, who serves as our treasurer for the council. Reach out, grab us. <laughs> we are all very actively engaged in the community. <laughs> we would love any additional support. We would love to sit down and have conversations with any stakeholders, even just anyone that has questions about the project and they want to understand how they can lend their voice and lend their support to the project, reach out to us. We are absolutely happy and willing to to sit down and have conversations with anyone. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. I love that. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Again, the website is nwamlk.org and it's the State of Black NWA Census Project. So I certainly want to encourage you to be a part of that. And, you know, I was just th- sitting here thinking when you said earlier, Chris, about that there's actually a growth of black businesses here. Mm-hmm. And I can, I can only, I, I have to give a shout out to my sisters, Jasmine and Jerron and the Black Paper Party yes, and for what yes. they're doing. They are a microcosm of what can be. Yes, absolutely. Right? Between them and between their black owned NWA program mm-hmm. that they've put out and, yes. and have graciously shared their platform. I mean, that's an outstanding program. And, and what you guys are doing at the council, the future looks bright. Yes. It does. It yes. really does. Yes. It does. It does look bright. Yes. And it'll look brighter if you do participate in this census. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I'll leave it at that. So Chris Seawood, treasurer of the Martin Luther King Jr. Council and Lindsay Leverett Higgins, president. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for on having the podcast us. Thank you today. for having Thank us. You so much. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. You guys made this conversation easy. <laughs> so. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. So, well, folks, there you have it. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. To learn more about us, you can visit our website at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. Remember, our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. We always have a brand new episode and we hope that you tune in Tell your friends about it. Share it with uh, with them on social media. And uh, we have all kinds of information and, and great episodes coming coming down the pike in the future. So stay tuned for what we're doing and what we're talking about here at I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we'll see you right back here next week for another new episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.